And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us straight from open-ended games, Previously, the Mad Men behind Against the Dark Master, which has been covered on multiple occasions on this channel. And now coming forth with its, with its first major expansion, with Secrets of the Golden Throne. The one and only Max Caracristi, because, because everybody has a hard time with his first name. Yeah, correct. But yeah, you, you can call me Max. Everybody does that. Oh. Uh, from what I recall, even 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 people in it, even even other Italians have a, have a hard time with your first name. Yeah, yeah, just just too too long, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, everybody could be Max, except from my mother when she needs to scold me, right? Then she uses my full name, and you know where that when that happens, you are. In trouble. Here's <laughs> I I know I'm always in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, some of it is because of some of my antics, but but trouble and me tend to go, tend to go like peas in a pod. <laughs> even if in yeah. one of those case, even if in one of those cases, it 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 was um, setting up an air horn noise in the bathroom as an April Fool's <laughs> gag. Well, that, that's a great apple's food. You know, somebody goes, somebody goes in. They're about to take care of their business, then they hear the biggest air horn they've ever, they've ever heard, and at, after complete silence, then they run out of the bathroom screaming. Good times for everybody. Yeah. But so the the. Obviously, the last time I had you on was during was during that interesting album crawl exper experiment, which I thought went I thought went pretty well. Well, yeah, I remember that. That that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've thought about doing it again. It's just a matter of timing. Just mm, that's it, pretty difficult with the different time zones and all. Yeah, uh, in the in the in the three or so years since I've been doing this kind of thing, I've developed a pathological hatred for time zones. <laughs> I don't think you can blame me for it. No, no, I understand perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like so um, when it comes to Secrets of the Golden Throne, which is meant to be a supplement in campaign. Um, yeah. I suppose. Let's get let's get into a bit of the origin. Was this was this something that was cooked up during development of Against the Dark Master, or did the idea come a bit after it had finished? So um, uh, half and half, I'd say. I mean, uh, we had the uh, part part of a new content, basically. Oh, oh, oh this. Uh, um, we had this during the development of Against the Dark Master because uh, Tom, our our uh, main artist and uh, art director, uh, is really into uh, folklore and uh, and uh, and legends, and he really is really into that. So he, he came he came up with uh, with some ideas for playing. Uh, you know, non non mm, Tolkienian. Mm -hmm. can, can you say that? Yeah, <laughs> uh, kings. So so some more like fairy tales on or folkloric characters. Uh, the the basically the fairies or or the fae. Uh, how who would you call them? in basically in like the yeah, the also the uh, she. So these are the, the pixies, gnomes. That sort of, of people, little people that very common mm -hmm. in uh, in legends and fairy tales, and we I think we even had some of those 
as a stretch lock, as, as a stretch goal that we didn't reach during the first uh, Kickstarter campaign for, uh, for Against the Dark Master. Mm-hmm. And from there, we basically evolved the idea and uh, we, we, we used some of our stuff that we used in, in Playstub. We playtested it further. We developed it, and we were like, "Why? Why don't we uh, put out a campaign around all this?" Because uh, that that sounded really cool. And so here, here we are. Basically, that, that that's that's how kinda it all kind came together. In uh, you know, but it's kind of one thing led led to another, basically. So, and and we ended up doing. Uh, doing all this because uh, uh, because of this, basically. Yeah. yeah. So as I said, half and half, half was a river, and and that being there led us to develop it further because you know we we're always tinkering and playing around with with our idea campaigns and mm. uh, little rules. I, I bet that. Yeah, you are the same for with, with your games and, and and your campaigns. You you're always adding something, changing something, uh, and and stuff like that. But yeah, I can I can certainly get behind that. <laughs> now, based on what based on what you said, it sounds like you know, it sounds like Tommaso was what was um was the one who pushed for this more Arthurian leaning approach would that be accurate uh well yeah he, he was the um, one who started the idea but we all liked it and uh, and we got behind it very very quickly it it, it didn't took a lot of convincing you know to, <laughs> to persuasion to to convince us so yeah no no that, that's uh, I, the original idea is, is Tommaso's, yeah. Hey, and basically, we uh, we went like, what what if we we use like Arthurian legends and fairy tales, but made them like power metal? You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. that was the, the initial idea. Which is it? Which is in keeping with with cert, with the traditions of the place. Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Espe- especially, especially consi- especially considering the fact that with with both the original run and with and with this current form, you ended up setting up a play. You ended up setting up a playlist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we always try to. Uh, get inspiration from from music. That's partly because that's also what we did, uh, what we used to do when uh, when we played as, as kids, you know, in high school, and maybe the new uh, Blind Guardian album just dropped, and, and you like and you listen uh all of it on your stereo and and you get your inspiration for a new campaign <laughs> i mean that that's that's how it worked for me um we try to do the same way with the stuff we we do now basically yeah and well it's, it's funny you mentioned that since we since we ended up getting a new album from blind guardian just a, just a yeah. couple months ago yeah yeah so that i'm very excited to about it. So, life, life imitating art, I suppose. <laughs> Yet with that weird uh, Evangelion looking cover. Yeah, I, the, God, I yeah the God Machine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's cool. And with the. I, but, no, okay, yeah. No, go, go. With that in mind. When it comes to when it came to, I know I think we can we can start with the um with the with the campaign and end part part of it. Um, I remember when I was pitching, see what Secrets of the Golden Throne is to some to some of my colleagues here in the temple. 
Um, I had mentioned that it is. I had mentioned that it is Arthurian leaning, but has more in common with, say, Mists of Avalon than La Morte de Arthur. Would that would that be accurate? Um. Yeah, I think yes. I mean, it's uh, inspired by Arthurian legend, and you know, uh, also kind of cultic uh, mythology and folklore. But uh, the keyword here is inspired. We're, we're not. We are. We're taking elements, and we were taking um, things that uh, we think will. Uh, we're excited and, and, and turn out to be great in play, but we are not trying to go the Pendragon route, for uh, for example. We're not trying to recreate the Arturian. Yeah, uh, the, reason why, the reason why I invoked Mists of Avalon is um, something something like La Morte Arthur is obviously obviously taking taking one interpretation that is. For, yeah. That is far far more consider far more um, leaning towards the romantic aspect. I mean, it it was bit it was written in French. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Mists of Avalon has a bigger emphasis on on the myth on the obviously the Cel the Celtic myths the and and just the myths of the British Isles in ge in general. With exactly, more a, yes. more of a fantastical leaning than the romantic story, the romantic medieval story that La Morte Arthur was using, which yeah, except yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, nothing wrong with that, and I, I'm a big fan of of Pendragon the game, and I, I, I dream of being able to one day run a great Pendragon campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever be able to do that. But yeah, for example, one um, one of the other great uh, influences and sources of inspiration for this campaign for us was the as the um, Slain comic books from you know the 2000 AD British mm -hmm. series. I don't know if you're yeah, familiar I, with it. I am, yeah. and the, and <clears throat> fun fact, it has di it has dipped into the world of role playing. In the early two thousands, <laughs> although yeah, yeah, I remember that. Although yeah. um, I'd be hesitant, I'd be hesitant to use that one because I don't feel like go, mm -hmm. I don't feel like going back to my to my early D twenty days. I've I've done my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, if you're familiar with it, you, you you can understand that's that's definitely not your uh, classic. Arturian legend look and feel. No, it's much grittier, much uh, uh, a, a bit darker, probably also. And um, far more, so, far. I describe, I describe it. I've described slain as Celtic sword and sorcery. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that. So, uh, Ironic, given that Conan is supposed to be proto-Celt, but I digress. Yeah. Right, right. That's good. Cool. Yeah, but um, uh, I think the, the main uh, Slain saga we use as inspiration is the Horned God saga, which is uh, slightly more epic in tone than, than the classic Slain stories that are much more down to earth and sword and sorcerer here, but some sense of uh you know a, a mythology in the making uh and um a, le a legendary tales being told as as the detail in, in in the comics is basically the uh telling of the of slain deeds by one of his friends so yeah it, there's still uh, an epic um mythological theme uh, uh, but it's 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 darker and greater mm. than the Arturian saga uh, of course uh, in Secrets of a Golden Throne we, we've tried also to put some other aspects in it some of the uh, more magical 
and whimsical also aspects from the folkloric and the fairy tales. Yeah, there uh, definitely seems to be a, an emphasis on the more fey parts. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, in some sort is this also um, uh, pretty non-standard <laughs> against the Dark Master campaign, if we can say that, because uh, magic is relatively common in, in this setting. We also have a new culture to underline that, that's the enchanted culture, uh, which is when a your charters come from a place where the use of magic is kind of, you know, commonplace. Uh, magic is still magical, but you, you, you'll have perhaps, you know, uh, magic lights in the streets and something like that. Uh, and not being able to use magic is seen as something uh, strange, or perhaps even dangerous, mm. like in the Dark Sword cycle. From Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Uh, something like that. And of course, in of course the, the favorites, the he or she in this in these settings are very up in the use of magic. Yeah. But uh, this kind of works even in with a, a standard Dark Master setting because the the Awalon, the, 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 the island where this, this is all set, mm. is, well, it is an island and it's far off in the middle of the sea. No one has reached it for centuries, is cut off from the rest of the world. So you can pretty much drop it in your world and, and it won't change much because it's a very small island and that has no contact for, uh, with anybody else. So you can very well uh, uh, use it in a more low magic setting without upsetting you know the balance of things yeah and from now from what i from what i recall from the from the um kickstarter page you're introducing five new kins and i'd like to go i'd like to go into them and kind and kind of what they're going to be bringing to the table yeah cool uh, we, we, yeah. Well, I'll start with the pixels. Uh, yeah, we, the pixels are uh, possibly the most, uh, one, one of the kills that changed the most during playtest. We changed them quite a few times because we, we didn't quite get them right at the beginning. Uh, we're pretty satisfied as they are now because they do something that's very unusual for uh, uh, um, against the Dark Master chart, and that's that they can, they can fly. They can, uh, uh, with some limits, of, of course, they can, they can sprout uh, some of these, uh, these wings and fly for a limited time. Mm -hmm. And that's even just from the start, even, you know, zero level fixes. Can can do that. That that's that's what they do, basically. Yep. And that took some time to, you know, balance them out. But I think we we managed to do that, and we quite like how they play and feel. They're very, uh, very, mm, uh, they're quite good at using some kind of magic. They're. Uh, as you would expect from from pixies, they're uh, good at you know uh, doing uh, dexterous you know stuff basically, and uh, but uh, but they're, they're obviously very small, so they're not quite as good as uh, always maybe in close combat. Yeah. Now. Of course, of course. Next on next on the list is the changelings. <laughs> the changelings is a, a bit of a, a it's a strange game. Basically, it's it's the, the 
the the offspring of two humans that uh, for some reason have some fey blood in them. So they're they're born from human parents, but they aren't human. They have some distinct characteristic that that that's, that uh, clearly show they're not human. Like they are born with with hooves instead of, of feet, or they have a tail or horns, or their their skin is of unusual color, like I don't know, violet or green. Uh, so they don't really fit well in human society, but they are, neither are they, uh, you know, uh, pixies or gnomes or, or something else. So there are a bit of this, and a bit of that, and they have some strange powers that come from their, uh, their blood, basically. Mm -hmm. So next would be the Azrai, which, I think I think for a lot of people, even those who are familiar with with Fey leaning games from uh, from other entries, that might be one that it one that doesn't have a immediate parallel. Yeah, um, that's the truth. I I I I've learned. I I mean I I, I met the Asteroid first while researching for for, uh, for this uh, setting and. That's a, a very nice poem uh, titled The Astray. And by, uh, uh, I don't know, Robert, I, I don't know how to pronounce him, sorry. <laughs> Bush, Bushana? Bushana? Oh, I don't know. Um, Bushana, okay, great. And, uh, well, they are basically uh, water fairies. For, for people that 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 uh, that lives under that live underwater, where uh, they look uh, quite similar to humans, uh, particularly from from afar, or if you uh, just quick do a quick glance of them. Mm -hmm. But if you look more closely, you you'll notice they have the line of the, uh, their strange features, like their uh, their eyes are too big. Their uh, uh, their fingers are slightly too long, where they've got webbed feet. So they can pass as human, kind of, but they're not really human. And obviously they, they can breathe underwater. Mm -hmm. And they pass most of the time, they spend most, most of their time underwater. And we, with them comes another new culture, which is the aquatic culture, that uh, obviously uh, it's used for uh, for characters that uh, you know live uh, under the sea or, or like the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're they're quite acquainted maybe with the ways of living underwater. They're very very, very uh, skilled in, in that part, but they're not probably very well prepared for dealing with the uh, outer world. They might be, you know, fascinated by uh, by humans in very strange way uh, of, of thinking and doing things, and they may be they collect things they find in in shipwrecks, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't know what they are or how valuable they are and stuff like that. Yeah, and um, yeah, they're quite interesting characters. But. Mm -hmm. And last, lastly, would be the ogres, and there's many different ways that people will interpret ogres. <laughs> the ogre, but that's the gnome also. Oh, you, you... yeah. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot about the yeah. gnomes. Sorry about that. Well, we we leave the gnome for 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 last, and do the, the, the ogre and the ogres first. So the the ogre. Um, is portrayed in uh, are portrayed in, in, in many different ways in role playing games, and we try to stay uh, as true at the the, the the depiction we have of them 
in uh, in fairy tales without uh, 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 forcing them to be you know uh, evil creatures. You know, we wanted them to uh, to be just normal people you you could play while in fairy tales they usually just want to eat you mostly and uh, so the the ogre are basically distant relatives to the stone trolls that are in the main the core rules mm-hmm. in against the dark master they don't turn to stone or uh, are still very large and very strong but they don't turn to stone but they are Weaknesses they have to eat like a lot, like uh, almost I not almost constantly, but they have to eat why even more that uh, than their size will suggest. Uh, so if I do don't if I don't do that, they become uh, you know grumpy and uh, irritable and, and and then they fall basically into a coma if I if I don't hit uh, enough and uh, uh, basically that 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 that's the gist of it they're uh, they're kinda like the uh, Warhammer ogres if you if you're familiar with that as fair great co- great cooks the, good guides yeah don't get around them yeah. in an empty stomach and their god and their god is always 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 hungry yes most of it. that that's a uh, little more civilized they they were a great uh civilization once and they still have some some of that they, they like to be uh around civilized people mm. they I like to dress as fine as I can get, and and so uh, yeah, that it's far kind of different from the standard, you know, brutal showgirls you have like in Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, la- last but not least, we got the the gnomes that are well. Uh, Gnomes, yeah, very well. Little people, they're very wise, very skillful in uh, magic, particularly magic that deals with the the earth. Very, very tuned to the earth, mm-hmm. and they can turn invisible by, for for a very limited time, for, for a very short period. But they can just disappear mm-hmm. and and reappear some somewhere else. I, I can so, totally get that. <laughs> so yeah, basically these are the the kings we we got in the in the supplement, mm-hmm. and there are also uh, three new cultures. Two we've I've already spoken about the enchanted culture and the aquatic culture, and then we've got the court culture for. You know, when you're not necessarily of noble birth, but you've you've been raised and lived in in a court, but you're a courtier of some sort. You might be a palace guard or a kitchen maid or a or a page, a valet, uh, something like that. Mm-hmm. Now, with that with that in mind. In the in the pitch at the top of the Kickstarter page, it talks about it talks about the you 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 in first person going to going to the shores of the of this place that has only been spoken about in myths up until up until this point. Yes. So, one thing that I'm, one thing that I'm curious about is if you have a section dedicated to. To to kind of setting up story seeds to get the players uh, get the players on the on the island or even um, story seeds to get the players going if they're residents of of the island. Yes, yeah. Basically, you you have two types of of characters in a while, and and one one are the 
you know, our inhabitants. So you either have a, a human that that's, uh, that was born in Awalan, or, or you have one of the fairies or an ogre. And these are the only kings that are available for characters uh, born and raised in Awalan. There are no elves, no dwarves, no orcs. That's just this. Or you are an outlander. So you are a character created with the core rules uh, uh, rules and and you came to Avalon for uh, uh, for some reason and we go into that we we, we, we try to help you uh, set up the uh, the reasons for for charters to go to go there and and to to kick off the the campaign basically and the campaign I am uh, I mean, there's, there's a campaign attached to, to, to the book, but you can obviously use the setting for other adventures, other campaigns, and uh, mm -hmm. will the section helps you with that also. Yeah. Now, with that, with that in with that in mind, I will. <laughs> In one of the bullet points, there's mention about new combat and and rules options, specifically for underwater and aerial adventures. Um, that's that's an interest that's an interesting choice from my perspective because, given the given the um, Merp slash Rollmaster origins of Against the Dark Master, it's already a game that is going very detailed, and now you're adding extra degrees of freedom to to the matter. How do you ma how do you manage that without it be without it going too far? Uh, we try to uh, well, how can I say I would limit these options. I mean, we we try to to give you some some options to to deal with that, uh, keeping them optional, so you 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 can choose uh, to use them or not. And we we'll try to keep it as simple as as possible, so you won't find uh, extremely detailed uh, rules on I I don't know how how deep you can go or uh, how uh, exactly run a three dimensional combat with uh, uh, precise measurements and stuff like that. We we try to keep keep things simple, give you you know some simple roles or maybe a penalty uh, or or an effect for for the charter and, and and that's it to to avoid you know over complication. Which I mean, mm, some people may may enjoy that, but I think that those people already know how to how to do that and. And they can just apply those, uh, that knowledge to, to the game without uh, us telling them how to do that. So we, we give you some options to, to help you get things going. And, you know, if, if your characters fall uh, in water while, while in combat or a coat, uh, 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 are, are fighting a flying enemy, you can uh, move on and, and keep doing what you were doing and, and the, the rules are there to support you. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't want to, uh, you know, slow things down too much by adding uh, too many layers of complexity. Right, I, can, I can certainly get that. Oh. Uh, be beside us, we, we also have a few rules about uh, the uh, enemies of different sizes because obviously by having so many uh, little guys and, and big guys now in, in the rules, uh, I think it was nice to have some rules for, you know, I don't know, gnomes fighting against giants or, or, or trolls and, and vice versa. So we added a few uh, rules to, uh, to deal with that. Yeah. So, with that with that in mind, when it I I did think it was an interesting move, and, cer and certainly 
certainly on brand for you guys to release a the adventure that acts as a prologue a summer night's dream um within the within the adventure section of secrets of the golden throne do you do you plan on having some sort of catch up segment for those who didn't use the prologue i e how how mu how much how much of a f will there be spots where pl where playing the prologue may hat may indicate a factor well the the prologue uh, is contained in the campaign so the secrets of the golden throne will have the prologue as as the actual prologue of the uh, the campaign but for a few spots, few points where you can start the the campaign uh, even without using using the prologue. Uh, I basically the prologue in the uh, in the free adventure we have up on our page is mainly to get people uh, accustomed to the new setting, or maybe if they're trying to learn the rules and. I learn how to how things works. That that's a great place to start. Uh, you can skip it basically, mm -hmm. and, and and the campaign will, will will still work. Even if uh, dreams, as implied in in the adventure, will have a quite a big role in the campaign. Well. Uh, uh, Sharkers will 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 often find uh, ways to will often find themselves uh, dealing with uh, strange dreams and possibly uh, have even have adventures inside uh, their dreams. Yep. So there's a, a small section and uh, dealing with the with dream world. And how to use it in, in your campaign, and that's uh, the uh, non-inner romance uh, spell lore. So basically, a dream magic, which is um, and sort of ingrained in the setting. Mm -hmm. So, with that with that in mind, when it comes to the when it comes to the mod when it comes to the module, um, for lack of a better term, do you plan on having this go through the whole level range of against the Dark Master or is or not? Uh, uh yes, I mean the the the, the adventure, the, the campaign is pretty long and it why it may well Take your charter from the first level to the tenth, so you, you'll go through basically all or most of the, the range of, of uh, against the dark master uh, experience level. Mm -hmm. Which is good. That's good. That's good for. That is good. That is good from my, from my perspective, because I always I always like the long form adventures that are meant to be le meant to be like a full arc, or even even a full even a full epic. Yeah, we're trying to set the the adventure right, um, precisely like that, like an epic saga, and yeah, after that, we'll give you some. Guidelines, some ideas on how you you could, you know, further develop it, or uh, you know, add a second generation of heroes that came after the after the campaign. And uh, the, the campaign will uh, will uh, uh, will help you define and change. Uh, some of the setting details. So basically, uh, in, in a certain sense, the setting is part of a campaign, and and you'll decide what uh, what happens to the to the setting and what some of the setting details are while while playing the campaign. Mm -hmm. And. 
with now the other thing the other thing I'm cu I'm curious about is when it come when it came to the magic system in <laughs> against the dark master um virtually all of the magic was it was in a path system with the expanded yeah. magic that you plan on putting in for secrets of the golden throne is that still the case yes yes we 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 have three new spell lowers basically so but very near for the new lists of spell your your characters can learn and that adds to those in the in the core rules that's basically 30 new spells and some of them will be uh, available only to uh, charters from avalon mm -hmm. and over over uh are, are and like you know, normal spell you can get just learn, and we'll also give you some guidelines and options on how to deal with that. I mean, if you have a campaign running and you have a new spell or just popping out, we give you some idea on how to uh, get that in your campaign without mm -hmm. uh, being just like, okay, now you yeah, you got this new spell or yeah to, to learn. So, so some reason of why, why no one, uh, you know, no one uh, even knew those existed until now. And I'm guessing you guys, are, you guys have been taking steps to make sure that the that any additional spells or options don't result in creep, for lack of a better term. Uh, yeah, we we got we. Uh, we try to play test everything that what we 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 put out and we'll uh, we play test the what the campaign and the various options and of course the, the more options you give to to players uh, in a certain sense the more powerful uh, characters get because simply because they they got more options to to deal with the, with the problems but yeah it's nothing groundbreaking you you won't find uh, uh nothing how, uh, too powerful or or, inc or incredibly broken in, in the in the setting uh of course um, you know uh, in some settings some campaigns uh uh kill like the pixie or the Azrael or, or the gnome who are able to do uh things like flying or breathing underwater or disappearing for for a moment uh, can be pretty powerful but uh, we've tried to uh, limit that in some way and give you uh, again give you guidelines on how to uh, insert that in your setting and your campaign in a way that will then won't be out of place and it won't be just a new uh, toy for for the players, but also something that adds something to the world. Mm -hmm. So, so um, with that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as a page count for um, Golden Throne? Uh, it's about two hundred fifty, three hundred pages, mm -hmm. more, more or less. We are we're still I, I I'm still writing some part uh, some parts of the adventure and we still need to finalize some finalize some stuff but more or less that that's the five page count that's that's gonna be which would put it slightly un which would put it slightly under um the page count for against the dark master proper yeah about like a half of a... <laughs> Give, well given that against the dark master was 574 pages yes <laughs> yeah and... but again i mean it's it, it's just a campaign so mm -hmm. not meant to be as big as I guess I don't think I would be able to write a campaign as long as the core rules. <laughs> yeah. 
and I do I do want to congratulate you guys on managing to get managing to get funded with with um with money to spit with money to spare even even in the fi even in the final hours of the campaign. Yeah. Yeah, we had a very uh a pretty high, you know, uh funding goal. Uh I mean, uh we uh, as I said elsewhere we are a very small company so uh we don't have much uh of leeway we we don't have uh, much way to to play around with, with costs and we prefer to uh you know keep things simple and and avoid uh, putting too many uh things and stretch goals just to be sure we will be actually able to to deliver what we promise uh because in the end that that's what's important right that you you back the the adventure and you get that and and i think that that, that that's what what is the, the most important thing basically mm -hmm. and with that in mind what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window uh I think more or less next year, around this time probably, maybe a little sooner. Actually, it's really hard now to to ghost these things because uh, between logistic problems and people uh, uh, scarcity, things like it's always uh, like a shoot in the dark, <laughs> They're trying to. Uh, uh, going for a date, but I but I think we will be safe for uh, if by saying that we'll we'll be ready next year, less this time. Yeah, not I will of course be looking forward to seeing how it develops. <laughs> but for just to to give you an example, that's good. The the second printing of the of the of the book. So we we didn't have to do basically anything besides uh, preparing the the PDF. We, we adding a few uh, a few rata, so nothing major. Uh, it was delayed by about six months or so, probably more, just because there there wasn't uh, enough paper. For the, the the printer said us, uh, yeah, we, we can do it, but you'll have to wait because we don't have enough paper to, to print it. Yep. So, no, it's I, it, and I know that against yeah, Dark Master is a quite quite a thick tome, but it's I mean it's it's not that big. <laughs> so uh, we didn't use up uh, all all the paper. That's ourselves. It's, it's it's a problem that that came up, that came up in. Uh, on this year, and we hope uh, it will be solved soon, but yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And with with that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way back to my temple. Yeah, thanks to you for having me, mm -hmm. and uh, for, you know, being so flexible yep. with, your, with, you, with your hours. And any time you see fit to return to my temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>